So this here is the new Apple Watch Ultra 2, or is it the Ultra 1? It's very hard to tell the differences when looking at him, but let's find out what is actually new on the Ultra 2. So this, in fact, is the Apple Watch Ultra 2. And if you've seen an unboxing for the Ultra 1, many things have stayed the same. I actually just realized I didn't make a video on the Ultra 1, except on social media. So if you aren't following me there yet, feel free to do so for more videos. But this is in fact the Ultra 2 and there isn't much to say about it. Very similar unboxing experience to the original with its introductory brochure of the Apple Watch Ultra. Beneath that, you get the box that holds the Ultra 2. And after some ASMR action inside the box, you get your magnetic fast charger to USB-C cable, which just like the original Ultra, it is a braided cable, so a little bit more durability. I'm glad that mostly all cables that Apple provides now is braided, just like on the iPhone 15 as well. And here is the Ultra 2 quickly getting into the ultra 2 out of the packaging it looks very familiar like very familiar but we'll look into that here shortly because under that we also get the band and i opted for the trail loop in the new blue slash black color option which looks pretty good in person in my opinion it has titanium buckles so it blends in very well with the titanium body of the apple watch ultra and this band is ultra thin and lightweight and it's made from a nylon weave which makes it very comfortable when you throw it on it has a bit of elasticity, but not too much. And it's easily adjustable because it does have Velcro and you have this pull tab that you can easily pull and adjust to your fit. Now all the new Ultra watch bands are going to be carbon neutral, just like the Ultra 2, because this is also carbon neutral. It still has its titanium body, but it's made from recycled titanium, making the watch fully carbon neutral if you attach it with one of the new carbon neutral watch bands. Now booting up the Ultra 2 and comparing it to the original, you can't tell them apart at all. On the back, you have the same sensors from before, such as the temperature sensor, the blood oxygen sensor, and the third generation optical heart rate sensor. On the side, you have a crown guard that protects the digital crown and side button from impacts. Then on the other side, you have your action button, speaker, and siren. Now you do get a very familiar exterior, but what actually has changed is internally. The Ultra 2 comes with a new S9 SIP, which is going to be its new chip. This new chip has a few new capabilities than the previous S8 chip in the Ultra 1. Now with this new S9 chip, it allows you to process Siri requests on device. So requests will not only process quicker, but also work without needing to have a connection. For example, if you were to start a new workout, it'll do it all on the device instead of having to extend that request to the cloud and then wait for a Wi-Fi or cellular connection to process the request, then finally process it if it had a good connection. Since it is on device, things are gonna be quicker and more secure. Now the Ultra 2 also has a new second gen ultra wideband chip, which helps you get a more precise location of where your iPhone is when using the find my iPhone feature from the watch. So now instead of just listening to a tone and try to find your device, it'll actually tell you where exactly your device is, which is a nice feature. Now there's also a new double tap gesture that lets you use your index finger and thumb and pinch them together in order to do an action like snooze alarms, play or pause music, take photos with the camera remote, open the smart stack and scroll through your widgets. Now, depending on when you're watching this, that feature may still not be out yet because it is coming with an update on watchOS 10.1. So as of shooting this video, that is currently in beta. I actually installed the beta just to try this out. And from the past week of trying it, it's not something I've come to use often. Sometimes I even forget that it's a feature. Of course, I could see this being useful if you have your hands full and can't use your other hand to touch the screen. But so far, I still haven't gotten used to using it because sometimes I just forget it's there. Now, lastly, the Ultra 2 has an upgraded display that can get up to a crazy 3000 nits of brightness. So when comparing it to the Ultra 1, which had 2000 nits of brightness, you won't have issues viewing it in direct sunlight. Now, when you use the flashlight, this thing gets super bright. You can use the digital crown to give it a boost of brightness and take advantage of that bright display. And this feature is something I tend to use a lot when walking around the house at night 
and it becomes very, very useful. And now it gets even brighter. But aside from this, you now get double the storage space on the Ultra 2 as well. So it now has 64 gigabytes instead of 32. So if you like to store apps or lots of music, it won't be an issue having this 64 gig of storage. But these are gonna be the key differences between the new Apple Watch Ultra 2 and Ultra 1. Honestly, if you have the Ultra 1, I couldn't really recommend you to upgrade to the Ultra 2 with upgrading the Ultra 1 just by simply a software update to Watch OS 10. It just feels like a brand new watch already with all the new features. Plus you get the new modular Ultra watch face, which is my new favorite watch face to use on the Ultra. All of the bands are compatible just like before. So you will not be able to tell which one is the Ultra 2 or the Ultra 1. If you're currently looking to upgrade to the Apple Watch, I'd say go with the Apple Watch Ultra 1 if you can find a really good deal, maybe under $600 or so. Otherwise, the Ultra 2 would be a solid upgrade. Now the Ultra is kind of aimed for those that are going to be doing like intensive sports activities, all that stuff. I don't do all that. I just like it because of the big screen and also the long battery life. I could go up to close to three days without charging my watch. It's nice to not always have to charge it up every day like the past Apple watches. So the Ultra, if you're looking for a big screen and better battery, definitely is a nice one to pick up. But if you already have the original, I don't think you should upgrade to the Ultra 2. But that's just my thoughts. I wanna know your thoughts in the comment section below. Is the new Ultra 2 something you're thinking about upgrading to? As always, hit that like button if you enjoyed it. Follow on the socials if you're not yet and feel free to reach out. And if you feel like being awesome, hit that subscribe button and tap that notification bell. That way you get notified every time I drop a fresh new video. Anyways, appreciate you all for watching and the continued support. And uh, I'll catch you all on the next one. All right. Peace.